Hey guys, Raven of Ash here. I decided to do this guide for Dark Souls 3 because I felt there was not a lot of information about the topic of parrying in invasions. Although this guide is meant for the more inexperienced invaders, I tried to put stuff in that might appeal to all invaders. The idea was to create a guide that would rely on footage taken from invasions instead of tackling the subject in a more abstract manner. Also, by concentrating this information in one video, I was aiming to create a resource that players could go back to if needed, instead of having to go through several videos. I should also mention that there is a great Dark Souls 3 parry guide, although not specifically targeted at invasions, that I will reference several times in this video, done by the Souls Uploader Utahs, a link in the description. Some information in this guide is also covered on Utah's guide, as I tried to make this one as standalone as possible. Two additional notes. First, this guide is made on Regulation 1.35 version 1.14. Second, some of the footage shown will be from older patches and should be only seen under the contest specified for the specific clip. An example is the mail breaker used in certain clips for taking reposts instead of the dagger. A while ago, and in certain builds, the mail breaker was the dagger class weapon that could yield the highest damage on the repost. However, it was nerfed later. I won't make direct references to all of these matters on the guide because I think a lot of technical data sometimes dilutes the point I'm trying to get across. That said, feel free to ask me anything you like on the comments, criticize or correct any statement I do on this guide. Let's start. So why is parrying important in invasions? In invasions, there is a huge disparity of resources between you, the lone host, and his sometimes existent party of phantoms. While in duels, you start with no disadvantages against your opponent, in invasions you always start unnumbered against the embered host and with half your possible Estus flasks. Also, because of the fact hosts can have up to three friendly phantoms in the world simultaneously and can resummon them if they die, it is useful to be able to one-shot or cause big chunks of damage to hosts or phantoms. However, not all invasions are won by parrying. It's only a useful tool in the invader's kit that I believe a good invader should master. But there are situations where I believe a parry is essential to win an invasion. Look at these two examples. The first one is in the Cathedral of the Deep. If I disengage, the party will go to the boss room. No mobs are present. They seem happy to try to kill me at a distance and will not engage in melee range except for punishing heals. I time my parry when the host approaches to punish my heal, swapping for a high critical damage weapon for the repost. On the second invasion, the host has seeded the world, and the party will not go through the level until I am dead. I get hit by his first running attack on purpose, to give him the idea that that is the only way he can hurt me. When he tries to attack me again, I know what attack he will do when he is at the correct range to hit me. Parries for a good invader are rarely product of chance. Through knowledge you can become much better at parrying and even out the odds, even on seemingly desperate invasions. So what attacks can you parry? Although this is not a question related specifically to invasions, I will say here that you can parry almost any attack, so it's easier to name what you cannot parry. You cannot parry jumping attacks, any whip attack, great hammers, two-hand light and heavy attacks, great axes, two-hand light and heavy attacks, ultra great swords, two-hand light and heavy attacks, curved great swords, heavy attacks. As for weapon arts, some weapon arts can be parryable. Please ask me in the comments if a specific weapon art can be parried and I will answer you to the best of my knowledge. Here are some examples of parryable weapon arts. The rolling attack. Although every kind of opponent can use these attacks, I often see users of large weapons, great axes, great swords and great hammers use rolling attacks to compensate for the slow speed and predictability of their weapons. Oh. 
finishing attack. Opponents armed with a spear, katana or a curved greatsword will often spam these attacks because the running attack speed and range of those weapon classes. Neutral parries. What I mean is to parry an attack out of the neutral situation, like in the example shown. This is different than a reaction parry because I'm parrying when the opponent gets in melee range instead of reacting to his animation. Neutral parries are hard to accomplish because they are hard to predict, unlike running attack parries or rolling parries. The face tank parry. Dark Souls 3 has a stun lock prevention mechanism to prevent players spamming attacks without being counted. Most weapon classes will let the player roll or parry after taking hits. With most weapons, you can be hit two times and you can parry the third. There are exceptions to this three hit parry that I will talk about later. Setup parry. A setup parry is a parry achieved by first blocking one or more hits with a shield before parrying. Restart parry. A restart parry is a parry achieved when an opponent has to restart an attack animation. By having to restart his attack, the parry timing becomes easy to predict. These are examples of situations in which an opponent has to restart his attack. Which should be my parry tool? I will not cover in this guide the more exotic parry tools such as katanas, parrying dagger, rapier, curved swords or the ferrum greatsword. I have used them all, but I feel they are not optimum for parry. Of course they can get the job done, but they have several disadvantages relatively to the more common parry tools. Before I go on, I will again refer to the Yuta's parry guide where I saw this table. This table highlights the active parry frames of these parry tools. Although Yuta's claims that the parry frame data is not accurate because of subsequent patches, I think that the basic philosophy of the shown parry tools is unchanged. Please note that this table does not have startup frames of the parrying tools. Medium shields are the highest stability shields that can parry. Stability dictates the amount of stamina that is drained whenever one is hit when blocking. A shield with high stability will allow for more block blows before getting guard broken. Some medium shields can also block 100% physical damage with it, which is important. When it comes to parrying, the downside to medium shields is that they have less active parry frames as shown in the before mentioned table. These shields are also heavier than small parry shields and small shields. Some of the best shields on this class are the Logic Knight Shield and the Silver Knight Shield. Both of them have top of the class stability in both parry. Their downside relatively to other medium shields is their high weight. Because of their low parry frames and high stability relatively to other shield classes, medium shields are best applied to set up parrying. Small shields are divided in small parry shields and regular small shields. They have different parry animations and different parry frames. Small parry shields have the best parry frames of any parrying tool, but they have very low stability and damage absorption. They are really not meant for blocking. The best in class is the target shield because of its class leading stability if you attempt a setup parry. Regular small shields. Regular small shields, on the other hand, are a medium ground relatively to small parry shields and medium shields. They have more stability and higher damage reduction but lower active parry frames than small parry shields. However, they have more parry frames and less stability and damage reduction than medium shields. The best in class regular small shield is the Welling and the Iron Round Shield for their class leading stability for setup parries and high damage absorption. Fist and Claw Weapons Fist and Claw Weapons have good parry frames, 
excellent startup frames and used to have very fast recovery frames before I nerfed a few patches back. Very recently there was a nerf to the Fist and Clock class where you can take an instability hit with extra damage if you parry too early. Still a good choice for parrying, the Fist and Claw weapon class is light and besides parrying are a readily available weapon in your arsenal. Their downside is that they cannot block, thus not allowing for setup parries. The most common example of this class is the Cestus. Another example is the Claw I used in this clip. So what parry tool do I recommend for invasions? It depends on your loadout, namely the weight you are willing to allocate to a parry tool, but the clear winner for me is the regular small shield like the Welly. But why? There are some weapons that in my experience cannot be fast tank parry. Great swords or curved great swords come to mind. These make this weapon class is rather difficult to parry out of neutral without a setup parry. Neutral here meaning a simple light attack, not a running or a rolling attack. It is possible, as in this clip, but it's not easy or frequent. But if setup parrying makes some weapon classes much easier to parry, why not go for a medium shield instead? Let's watch this invasion against this unwilling test subject. I'm using a medium shield. As you can see, I'm trying hard to set up Perry's greatsword. I tried to do it several times on the second hit and even on the third hit once. Of course I might be botching the timing, but in my experience the parry timing on medium shields against greatswords is pretty tight. After all this, I switch to the Llewellyn and try to parry. The point is that with small shields I can get more reliable parries than with medium shields because of the superior amount of active parry frames of the small shields. I believe that this is also true in situations where lag is an issue. So basically always, to some extent. But some people could argue that the trade-off of using a small shield versus a medium shield is that with the small shield setup parries will always make you tank some damage and you will lose more stamina than you would if you were using a medium shield. And that is true. But take a look at this example. This is the stamina and HP damage you take by making a setup parry against an ultra great sword with a plus 10 little well in small shield. I prefer to take that damage and have more consistent parries than to whiff the parry, which will in itself totally deplete my stamina, preventing me from rolling away. This is not to say that medium shields are useless, far from it, just that for parrying and invasions I prefer small shields over them. The Windshield Wiper Parry I usually do this with a one-handed greatsword, because greatswords have good range and swing relatively fast. The idea is to swing your sword, making the opponent roll or go around you for a running attack. If you time your swings well, you can parry his running or rolling attack. Barker bomb bait, named after Souls Uploader Adam Barker, consists in throwing a bomb against your opponent. You will roll in your direction to avoid the bomb and perform a light roll attack, which you will parry. Based on the Barker bomb bait, you can do several variations. In this clip, I use the spell to make the opponent roll on my direction pairing his rolling attack and swapping to the Moonlight Greatsword for the post. Have in mind that against experienced opponents, the Barker bomb bait will probably get countered. In this clip, my opponent takes his Cestus out and throws the bomb at me. I know he will try to parry. So I stomp instead of doing a rolling attack and go for an R1. The after repost parry. After you parry an opponent and while taking the repost, your character gets invincibility frames. A lot of opponents will start swinging wildly to catch you once your invincibility frames run out. A lot of times that is a good opportunity to parry them. Yes, this bait parry. 
This parry consists simply in making the opponent think he can punish your Restless Drinking by attacking you. When he gets to you, you are healed and free to parry his attack. Also notice how I adjust my distance to the opponent, walking backwards or forwards while drinking Estus in order to get the parry timing right. The quick draw parry. This one's a bit hard to pull off, but can be useful in some situations. For this one, I always use the Fist and Claw class parry tool because of its fast startup frames. The idea is to be two-handing your weapon and change to a parry tool at the last second. You will probably get a partial parry, but I think it is worth it. The AFK parry. For this one, you need to put yourself with your back turned to the opponent and the camera pointing at them. A lot of times the opponent will start to run at you and will try to do a running attack that you can easily parry. Like in every parry, no lock-on is required. The attack bait parry. You throw an attack that the opponent can easily dodge. This works well with heavy and slow weapons. If he dodges towards you, he's probably going to do an easy parryable rolling attack. So, should I upgrade and infuse my parry tool? As for upgrading, the answer is invariably yes. An upgraded shield has better stability and becomes better at setup parries. If you are using a fist and claw type weapon, the answer is also yes, because you don't need to use it only for parrying, you can also use it to attack by two-handing it. As for infusing it, it depends on your parry tool. Infusing a shield will significantly lower its stability. A non-infused Llewellyn shield at plus 10 has a stability of 59. If you infuse it, it will go down to 42 stability and lose some damage absorption. This is a decrease of almost 30% stability, which is significant. So, in my opinion, if you want to set up parry your opponents, you should not infuse your medium or small shield. On screen, you can see the difference from a normal shield to a blessed shield for the Llewellyn and the Iron Round Shield. However, with a parry tool not suited for setup parries like in Fist and Claw Weapon or a small parry shield, go ahead and infuse it with the Blast or Simple Gem for regenerating HP or focus points. So how to capitalize on parries? You can increase the damage of the repost in three ways. Have your weapon buffed, have the Hornet Ring equipped, switch to a high damaging weapon or a weapon with a high critical modifier such as most but not all dagger class weapons, the Lotric Knight Sword, the Short Sword, the Demon Scar, the Crow Quills, the Rapier, the Claws, the Mannequin Claws and the Crow Talons. After a non-lethal repost, it is often a good idea to try to further push your advantage by throwing in a Death Hunter charm at your opponent to temporarily prevent Estus healing. This has several advantages. If you are fighting multiple opponents and one of them is affected by the charm, you will have to be more careful or risk death. If you are fighting a single opponent, he will often panic roll or try to heal. If he panic rolls, go for roll catches. If he tries to heal while under the effect of the charm, he will start an animation that is very useful for backstabs. Watch your opponent and adapt to their playstyle. 
As soon as I find my opponent, the host takes out the washing pole and starts spamming blending attacks. When I understand that he will keep doing them, even risking getting hit by the angel, I immediately go for my parry tool and get the parry. On this example something very similar happens. The host has a Dark Moon Blade buffed washing pole and wants to pressure me with running attacks. Again, I quickly change to a parry tool and parry his running attack. He was much more careful during the rest of the fight, making my life easier in this 3v1 scenario. Condition your opponent. What if your opponents are passive players? What to do then? Sometimes you can condition your opponent. In this invasion I tried to only get hit by the host's rolling attack. Never an R1 or any other attack, and I never tried to bury him. This tells the host that he can hurt me only through a rolling attack and that it is safe to spam that attack. Also, I keep one-handing the katana so that he thinks that this is how I play and that no parry is incoming. As I get rid of the sun bro, the first thing the host does is a rolling attack that of course gets parried. Don't take out your parry tool only when you want to parry. Play some time one handed. The idea is that your opponent forgets that you can parry it. If your HP is getting low and you draw your parry tool and attempt to parry, you are only asking to get backstabbed by an experienced opponent. I play with this concept against this host who is a good player by the way. As I get my health low, I take out my parry tool and he tries to go around me for the backstab. I surprise him by swinging my sword. It is only when he goes around my swings that I parry. In this invasion the opposite happens. The host has taken some damage and takes out his parry tool. I immediately understand that he will try to parry me and I go for the backstab. This is a similar example. Also, learn your weapon moveset either when one-handing or two-handing it. Both of them have their advantages and disadvantages. In this clip I had no use for the two-handed moveset. My build has very little poise and my opponent does about the same or more damage than I do. Additionally, he has 30% more HP because he is Ember. I'm low on Estus and I need a parry. I try to keep him occupied by being aggressive until he thinks he has an attack window for the running attack. Don't parry spam. Learn the situations where you can parry and when you try to parry, trust that you can make it. Don't try to parry and roll off or keep spamming the parry button. You won't make the repost and your opponent will know you are desperate for a parry and will take advantage of it. Be aware of your surroundings. A lot of times, while fighting multiple opponents, they will try to flank you. That can be a good parry opportunity, as the opponents that are flanking you will think that you are not aware of their positioning. Always try to keep all of your opponents in front of you by backing off, except when you want them to flank you in order to parry them. Well that's it guys, thanks for watching and good hunting.